I want to talk about omega-6, omega-3 fatty acids. We've all heard of omega-3s, right? The magic of omega-3s. How many people have driven in their car and heard about getting omega-3s? We'll send you a free bottle today if you just call. They're wonderful. They fix every disease. I'm kidding. <laughs> What's so special about omega-3s? Well, there's a balance between omega-6s. Omega-6s generally cause inflammation, and omega-3s reduce it. And here's the pathway. It's pretty fancy, but let's just distill it down to this. Omega-6s cause it. Omega-3s reduce it. So if you have too much omega-6s in your body, what should you do? Should you take omega-3s to balance out the omega-6s, or should you reduce the omega-6s? Raise your hand if you think you should add omega-3s to balance out omega-6s. Raise your hand if you think you should reduce the omega-6s. Thank you. You are paying attention. Okay. You do not want to counteract a poison by adding something else. Most people are not deficient in omega-3s. This is the big lie. Most people have enough omega-3s. The problem is that most people eat too many omega-6s. Now, don't get me wrong. If you take fish oil or omega-3s, it may help your symptoms. But this is a pharmacological effect. And in the long term, you will actually accelerate the aging process. These are very fragile molecules. And I have references to all. By the way, anything you want to see a reference to, I have like 100 slides of stuff from the medical literature. Okay? I'm not making these things up. This is science. So if you have too much omega-6, get rid of it. If you're poisoning yourself, get rid of the poison. Chuck was poisoning himself with omega-6s. Did I recommend fish oil to him? Absolutely not. Okay? I said, Chuck, just stop poisoning yourself. Now, not everybody responds like Chuck, but that's the starting point. You just saved yourself you know, a couple hundred bucks if you wanted to come to see me because my first visit, I'm going to tell you, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat that. That's the first visit. And then we start from there. And a lot of times the symptoms are already better. And then we get fancier, okay, and look at very specific things. Are you deficient in certain things? Do you have too much of other things? Try to balance those things out. <clears throat> so adding more omega-3 may temporarily alleviate symptoms, but in the long term will lead to too many fatty acids. Too much of anything is no good. You're not going to fix one problem by adding more of something else. Two wrongs do not make a right, but three rights make a left. OK. I want to talk about yet another type of metabolic poison. These are what are called neurotoxic agents. You want to get these out of your internal environment. Aspartame. Now, this is the worst of the artificial sweeteners. There's also saccharin, sucralose. There's a bunch of other ones. Aspartame. It contains something called methyl alcohol. Now, in the ER, we know, and we got some ER people here, that if you take methyl alcohol, you go blind. Destroys your liver, causes acidosis, blah, blah, blah. It's a metabolic poison. Yet, it's put into over 3,000 different foods. Aspartame. Not good stuff. You may say, well, Doc, it's a small amount. Yeah, but it's in three thousand different foods. It builds up over time. You're poisoning yourself. One cigarette will not kill you. Smoke a pack a day or two packs a day for 20 years and it all adds up. This stuff <coughs> adds up. Artificially sweetened things like beverages, uh, diet this, diet that, diet this, diet that. All of these things are being recommended to you as good for you. And that's, again, the point of this talk is there are foods that you're eating that you think may be good. Why is this yogurt good? It's low in fat and it's low in sugar. Therefore, it's good for you, right? No, it's not. It's containing poison. So you got to be careful when you buy stuff. You know, if you bought a chicken and you look at it, it says, Nothing. It says it's a chicken. Now, preferably, 
you're going to get your chicken that's not being fed poison to live on, okay? And, and organically raised animals are much better for you than, than commercially raised. But I have patients complain to me, but Doc, everything has fructose, high fructose corn syrup, or everything has sugar. Every, well, everything you're eating has it, but that doesn't mean everything has it. So you want to eat whole, real foods, preferably that you cook yourself. Because if you're not cooking it yourself, I can always, you know, if you're going to a restaurant, I can almost guarantee they're using cheap vegetable oils. Vegetable oils were created by the food corporations to make money, to sell products. They're relatively inexpensive. Those companies were the same companies that invented margarine. Now, we know, all know at this point that margarine's bad, right? Everybody knows margarine's bad. Margarine was introduced in the 60s as a cheap alternative to butter. We were told, don't eat butter. It's high in saturated fat and cholesterol. Eat margarine instead. It's better for you. Well, guess what? About 20 years later, they said, whoops, we're sorry. Margarine's actually poisonous. We didn't know it has omega-6s. These things are bad. Now we're told, don't eat margarine. Don't eat omega-6s eat this new and improved stuff that we don't call margarine anymore, okay? We're not calling it butter because it's not. There's all sorts of fancy names for this stuff in the supermarket. Can you name some of these things? Usually they have names that have the word healthy in it, or balanced, smart. or smart, smart, or a combination of many of these phrases. If something's really that healthy or smart or balanced, why are they telling you this? They're trying to trick you. Does it say healthy olive oil? No. Olive oil is good for you. They don't need to fake you out. Be careful. Aspartame. You want, let me tell you a little story about aspartame, poisoning. I had a patient that came to see me. This gentleman was shaking all the time. Every 30 seconds or so, he would do this. Do it again? I will do it again. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. He would do that. And um, I went through his diet. I found out he was drinking just tons of Diet Coke, eating all sorts of fried foods and peanut butter that had all these vegetable oils in it, blah, 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 blah. And the guy, that's all he ate was, was basically garbage. He'd been to all these neurologists and had CAT scans and MRIs and blood tests and all the tests are normal. Nobody knows what's wrong with the guy. So after doing a dietary history, and I said, well, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat that, drink water, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, the guy's lost like 30 pounds. He has much more energy. He's much less stressed out and his shake has gone away. This is not rocket science. This is actually common sense. And I can tell you other, I've had some bizarre stuff with aspartame poisoning. I had a patient that if she would smell anything, like cologne or any fragrance, bathroom freshener, anything, she would start shaking. When I did a reflex on her, I tapped on her knee, she almost jumped off the examination table. She was so hyper. I mean, I tapped her knee, and her whole body had a reflex. It was incredible. She was drinking like 12 Diet Cokes a day. So I did, it was more than just taking her off the aspartame, but I can guarantee you that that was a major contributor to her problem. And after stopping the Diet Coke, she got better. If you're drinking things or consuming things that have aspartame in it, you are poisoning yourself. It will lead eventually to Alzheimer's disease or some sort of dementia something bad. Maybe it won't manifest as that disease. Maybe you're just going to have a senior moment or be a little foggy or be slower, 